Welcome everyone to my Windows 10 Intermediate Part 2 video. This is going to be an actual demonstration on my own desktop on how to do the various things I talked about. And we're going to start first with how to install and uninstall programs. And I'm going to actually show you guys how to do that. All right, everyone. So jumping straight into how to install programs, you know, as I talked about before, there are two major ways of installing computer programs on your computer system. Uh, the first way is to actually just go on the web and either go directly to the manufacturer's website and find the download link through their website, or you can use third-party websites, for instance, CNET.com. So, and the, the reason why I would say just try to always go to the manufacturer's website when you're downloading a program is because obviously if you're on their website, you know that it's going to be a legitimate download. Whereas if you go to certain third-party websites, some of them could possibly contain the download, but they could have, you know, maybe viruses attached to it. But again, there are, you know, a good amount of well-known third-party websites like CNET.com. So you'll be fine if you go to those legitimate websites. And the reason, you know, you would go to some of these third-party websites as opposed to just going directly to the manufacturer's website is the main reason is speed. You know, sometimes when you go to the manufacturer's website and for more extensive and larger downloads, uh, it can be pretty slow at times. Whereas if you go to some third-party websites, they typically have faster speeds. But the other major way that I'm going to discuss later on to actually install applications in your computer system is by using the Windows Store. So I will show you guys that later on, but now I'm going to show you guys how to actually install a program using a web browser and just going through the web. So if I were to open up Microsoft Edge right now, open that up. And let's go to Google. And I wanted to download the Opera web browser. So I'm just going to type in Opera in here. And it should be the first thing that pops up. And yes, it's the first thing that pops up. And typically when you type in, you know, what you want to download the program, it's going to typically be the first thing that pops up. And what I would do then is I could either click download the Opera browser right here or go to their home page. Now I'm going to show you guys, I'll just go to their home page. Again, most manufacturers make it extremely simple to download their programs. You know, a huge download now button. And it's the same thing, like say if I wanted, say I wanted Google Chrome and I go to their website, it's the same thing of, again, it just brings it up right in front of you, download Chrome, and they make it really, really simple to actually download these programs. So all I would do is click the download link and click download now. And as you can see, it downloaded and it's saying, do I want to run it, save it, or cancel the download? And I would just click run. So bam, then it actually runs. And this is what the Opera installation wizard looks like. And this is actually really simple. All I would do is click install right here, but I can click options and it will show me more options of, you know, allow me to choose the actual, you know, folder that it gets installed in, whether I want to make it my default browser or not, import bookmarks and data from my default browser or send uh, future usage information. So like, let's say for instance, I did not want to make Opera my default web browser, but everything else is fine. And then I can click the back button and then I can click install. And as you can see, it's just going to quickly install itself into my computer system. And typically what happens is this, exactly what just happened. After a program successfully installs, it typically runs automatically right after that. So it's really simple. This is cool. This is the Opera web browser, but I'll just close out of this. And again, it also, as you can see, made a desktop icon. So you can choose some of these options, whether you want to actually like make a desktop icon during the installation or not and various things like that. It also made a taskbar icon as well. And most installations are, could be different. You know, Opera is really simple. It just clicked install and it installed it right away. Some installation programs, as I showed you guys in the presentation, could have much more steps in different windows that show you the different options you can choose. So it really depends on the program that you're installing. But again, as I said, like you can actually go to certain other third party websites. So if I go to CNET offer download and I click it right here, it typically, uh, so this actually directs you to Opera's website, but again, CNET will have for other programs, their own download links, and you can use those for faster downloads. So I can like click visit site and it takes me to the same installation process. 
I could just click out of that. And that's simply put how you actually install a program, you know, using your web browser and the internet to actually just directly install it from the manufacturer's website or a third party website. So now the second way you would actually go about adding applications or installing programs is through Windows Store. So if I click the start menu, it's always going to be a default title, the Microsoft Store. It's also known as the Windows Store, and I can click that and it goes into it. The Microsoft Store is usually on your taskbar by default, but I took it off. So I could easily just add it back, right click the tile, go to more and pin to taskbar. And as you can see, it shows up right here as like a little bag with the Windows logo on it. So either one, I can click it on the tile or the taskbar icon. And when I click it, it opens the Windows Store. So let's say, for instance, I wanted to install Netflix. Well, I can go to the search bar and just type in Netflix. And as you can see, there it is. And it's extremely simple to get applications and install them through the Windows Store. Again, here's Netflix, brought me to the home page for Netflix and just click get. It's as simple as that. And as you can see, it's going to then install Netflix for me. It shows the actual download process and the installation process. As you can see, you'll get a little notification there that it just got installed and you can pin it to the start right away or launch it. So I can click launch and there you go. It launches Netflix. You know, really cool. So it's kind of different though. Installing an application or program from the Windows Store could uh, have a different interface as opposed to just like if I were to go on Netflix, you know, obviously on a web browser, it's going to look a bit different, but typically it's going to be the same thing. So it's really cool and really easy how you actually install programs. Again, you just go to the page of that application and just click get and it will get it for you. And it will let you know again whether it costs a certain amount of money or whether it's free, you know, it will say free. And the good thing about the Windows Store as well is they will have reviews of these certain applications so you can see which ones are actually good or not and whether or not the actual application itself is good or not. Now again, to uninstall programs and applications is extremely simple as well. If I go to the search bar and type apps and futures, and it actually shows up right here, apps and futures, let's say Opera that I downloaded before, I want to uninstall that. So I can just scroll down for my applications or even Netflix, I could just click on it and it literally just gives me an option to move it or uninstall it and I could just click uninstall. Click it again and it fully uninstalls Netflix. Again, just go to apps and futures in your settings and it takes you to this page and it gives you a whole list of your apps and futures and again, you would just click on the actual application you want to get rid of. So say I wanted to get rid of Opera. There it is. Click it and click on install. Click it again. I can click uninstall then. And sometimes they'll have this, you know, what is your reason for uninstalling it? You can just skip it and just click on install. And bam, really, really simple to uninstall applications and programs. All right, so jumping into settings, just to recap, again, how you access your main system settings, you could just click the start menu right here and click this gear button. And it'll actually say settings right there and it takes you to the main home page for Windows settings. So what I wanted to talk about first is if you were to go into system settings, you know, this is for your display to mess with settings regarding your sound, how you get notifications and power, but I'm mainly just gonna go over display, talk about sound briefly, power and sleep options and storage. Those are the only four options I'm gonna go over. So starting with display, box right here labeled one, another box labeled two, this is something you don't have to worry about unless you actually have one or more displays, you know, monitors that you're actually using. So I have two, that's why this is there and I can actually rearrange them if I wanted to. I can make a monitor, you know, if I click one right here and it actually gives me more options when you have multiple displays, I can extend the displays, I can duplicate them so it shows the same exact thing on, this, on both screens or I can make it so it only shows, you know, output on screen one or screen two for whatever reason, you know, if you wanted that. I just have them as extending the displays so I can work with, you know, quite a few things at a time. And again, if you check, uh, mark this box right here, uh, that's what you can do to make, you know, the display that you currently have selected, like one that I have here, your main display. So as you can see with the display, the only settings you would really mess with 
you know, are the display resolution. So again, you can change your resolution right here. Again, the max resolution is going to be the max resolution of your actual monitor, which is known as the native resolution. And you can't go higher than that. So I have mine on, you know, 920 by 1080, but I could increase it because my monitor can actually go up to 4K right here. But I'm just going to keep it at 1080. And again, as I said, you know, within the display options, this is a big thing for scale and layout is, you know, this can make the icons on your screen look bigger or smaller. So if I wanted to make them bigger, I can click 125%. And as you can see, it makes all the icons bigger. It makes the text bigger. But again, you really wouldn't need this unless you had a high resolution. So if I go back to a 100%, it's all fine. And again, like when I actually go to 4K, I cannot show you here because my video recording software actually only allows me to go up to 1080p. But if I were to go to 4K, all these icons on my taskbar, my desktop icons would be extremely small. So I actually have to use this when I am, you know, using my system and I put it at 150%. So it actually makes the icons, you know, readable and at a decent level. Uh, whereas opposed to if I just kept it at 100% and at, you know, what 4K resolution shows it as, they are really small and the text is really small. So again, you really could keep it at 100% for the vast amount of time. But if you do use a higher resolution and you see that text and icons are really small, that's when you can change the scale and layout option. So other options in here I would not mess with or touch, you know, a lot of them are self-explanatory, but those are the major options of just, you know, if you have multiple displays, you can rearrange them and just change which one's your main display, go to the multiple displays menu to see all the available options. And it really is just, you know, the scaling and layout option right here and your resolution. Now, if we go to go down one, we can check out the sound. So the sound right here, as you can see, it's got the master volume and you can use this to adjust your sound. And you could also, if you're having issues with your sound and it's not working, you can click this troubleshoot option. Now, when you click this troubleshoot option, it typically isn't the best and it, at least when I've used it, you know, it never really can troubleshoot properly my sound issues. Uh, but what's really nice is if you ever have sound issues, you don't have sound at all, you can click this, it says output and choose your output device. And if you click this, you can make sure that it's actually outputting to the device that you want it to output. Cause sometimes it might choose, for instance, uh, real tech digital audio output is the actual audio for my motherboard. But if, um, I don't actually have that plugged in. So that's why if this option gets checked, my audio is not going to work. I have to make sure that it's actually this, the BenQ option, because this is my monitor and my monitor has built in speakers. So, you know, this is a good option to where if you're, system isn't actually you know it doesn't have any sound you can come to this output device menu and see if the actual proper output device is selected uh, but it's really nice as you can do that with the um, if you click the speakers in the lower left corner you can do the same thing there though now again same thing with the microphone as you can see uh, you can choose the microphone once you plug one in and it should pop up here so if the microphone's not working as you can see how mine is going as i'm talking well, then you can make sure that the actual microphone is properly selected, you know, and, and that's just the basics with sound, just making sure you have the proper devices checked just in case you don't have any input or output for sound, make sure the proper devices are checked and that usually solves the problem. And the next thing I'm going to discuss is power and sleep. So again, when we talked about power and sleep, you know, as you can see, it just gives you an option to say, you know, after a certain amount of inactivity, I can turn off the screen. And also, uh, after a certain amount of inactivity, I actually put my computer into sleep mode. So if I click this, it gives you various options in minutes and even hours, or just never to turn off your screen. And same with putting it into sleep mode. It's the same options. And again, if you put it into sleep mode within like five minutes, you know, you don't need to mess with the screen because it's going to, in sleep mode, it's going to turn off your screen anyway. Uh, and again, I would recommend setting these options because you know it's going to save power you don't want to be wasting power if you're not actually using your computer system you want your screen to shut off or put your system into sleep mode and it's going to save you power now you can actually change the additional power settings right here if you click this option and this is what actually shows you the power plans so again what i recommend and it has an in parentheses recommended is just keeping it at balanced 
you know, this is again, automatically balances your performance with energy consumption on capable hardware. And this is going to give you a really good plan, power plan, you know, and basically it's what's, you know, the default on the vast amount of systems, but you could go to a power saver plan and click this. And again, it will do whatever it can to save energy by reducing your computer's performance wherever possible. It will actually set the screen and sleep options for you so that it, you know, it does turn the screen and put your system into sleep mode to save power whenever you're not using it and things like that. And um, uh, usually it will show you show additional plans and you just click this down arrow. And you can also go high performance, which literally just favors performance. It's going to use more energy in your system. But again, that's only if you're an advanced computer user and you are really using a computer program that needs this extra power out of it, uh, out of your system. So that's where I would just not touch this. Just keep it unbalanced. Or again, if you really want to save power, you can click the power saver option. So next, if we go back to the home screen, so actually I'm going to go over storage and this is really nice. If you click storage, it gives you a nice little graphical way of showing you how much storage you have in your system. You know, as you can see in my main C drive, I have 120 gigabytes used and 112 gigabytes free and it actually gives you a nice breakdown of like what exactly is taking up the most space. You know, do I have uh, apps and futures taking up the most space, my documents, music, videos. If you click show more categories, it shows more categories of pictures and other things like that, which is really nice. And again, if you have other drives like I do, I actually have a D drive. You know, I have another hard drive in my system. You can click this right here view storage usage on other drives and that's where it can actually shows you you know even if you have i have a couple of usb drives and plugged in my computer as well it will show you how much use space you have and how much free space you have and this is just a cool feature to use to see you know if you're getting to that point where your hard drive's getting full and you may need to take some things off and delete some things or possibly upgrade your hard drive to a bigger hard drive so if we click the home button again Next, we're going to talk about apps. So I'm going to go over, you know, what we kind of went over already, uninstalling apps, using the apps and futures list, uh, checking default apps, and some other features with that next. Okay, so moving on to apps, when I click into apps, you know, we kind of already talked about, as I just showed you, when you are uninstalling programs, you know, we talked about this apps and futures list again, just shows a whole list of all the applications that you have, and you would just click on one you know, if you wanted to uh, uninstall it, like you can click it and then click uninstall. So one thing that I talked about in my presentation, but I didn't show you guys yet, were exactly these types of programs and or drivers, especially that you don't want to uninstall. If you ever see how mine says Intel graphics driver, do not uninstall drivers and things like that because those are essential. Those are what's needed for your system to properly work, you know, and there's other forms of that, you know, Again, Adobe Acrobat, you would not touch that. You won't be able to open PDFs if you were to get rid of that and various things like that. Again, try to look up. You can even do your research more and see like, what can I get rid of? What uh, shouldn't I get rid of? And it will basically tell you this stuff. Again, I have like an audio driver right here and various things like that. If you see this LAN, that is for your network. If you ever have that, don't uninstall that either. So just be careful when you're uninstalling certain things. Now, again, and I showed you guys the default apps list, you know, really simple. Again, you can just choose the default app if you click, you know, on the app itself under where it says music or the, you know, types of files that you're trying to change, you know, what the default app is going to be to open it up. Uh, you click on it and can choose, you know, a different default app as long as again you have it installed you have to install it first for it to show up in this list now one thing uh, one other thing I wanted to show you here is startup so I kind of talked about this in task manager how you know it shows your startup applications these are programs typically uh, their services and the difference between like a program and a service is a service is still a program but it's a program that actually is constantly running in the background to provide you know, functionality and certain things to keep your system running properly or the application that it supports running properly. And these startup programs are kind of exactly how it sounds. They start up when you first log into Windows. And what's really nice is if you click you know, the startup tab, it brings you here and it shows you all your startup programs. And again, it will tell you what's really nice, whether it's got no impact at all. Obviously, I have this turned off, so it's got no impact. 
whether the program has a low impact on your system resources that are being used or a high impact or even a medium impact as you can see right here now again if you have certain programs on here that you know you don't necessarily want or need you can turn them off especially if they have a high impact and you realize you know when you are starting up your computer system and booting into windows and it's taking a long time to really get settled and properly allow you to then you know start opening the things you want to open go on a browser and things like that it could possibly be due to the startup programs you know actually just really bogging down the performance of your system and making it slower because you may have a lot of them and this is just one way to check and see how high of an impact that they actually have on your system. So moving on, I'm going to talk about the devices settings window. So which, you know, allows you to change settings with your devices, Bluetooth devices, your printers, scanners, your keyboard, or your mouse. So if you click into this, as you can see, this is the main screen. And you can see this is where you can easily add Bluetooth or other devices if I click this. I could add, you know, wireless keyboards, headsets, uh, a mouse, and stuff like that. I could even connect to a wireless display. You know, if you have a smart TV and you want to connect your computer to that smart TV, you can do that as well. And then this gives you an option for everything else, like different types of uh, Bluetooth devices, like Xbox controllers, and different wireless adapters, and things like that. So that's uh, you would click which one you want, and then you know, connect the device. And this is where you can make sure Bluetooth is turned on as well. You know, if you're having issues to where you can't connect a Bluetooth keyboard or mouse, make sure Bluetooth, you can come here, is actually turned on. And it will actually show you devices that you have connected, but not only that, devices that you have connected before to your computer system, even if they aren't connected at the time, it will show you that, for instance. You know, uh, I have this pair of headphones right here that I once connected to my computer. They're not connected now but it still shows up, which is nice, so that um, it's easier, you know, when I want to connect these headphones again to my computer, they should connect automatically really quickly. And again, the only other option I would choose uh, is if you go to mouse, you know, you can change the left and right button as your primary key. You can change how many multiple lines when you go through the scroll button and choose the exact lines and things like that. And as I talked about the scroll inactive windows, when I hover over them, you know, if I had a set of notes open, and then I wanted to also scroll in, you know, a book that I was reading, you know, I can click this and turn this on and it will make sure that I can, I don't have to actually click into that window where the book is to scroll down in that book. I can just hover over it and scroll down and it will scroll down for me. But next I'm going to go over the actual major personalization options. Yeah, I went over a few of them in uh, the last video um, with Windows 10 basics, but now I'm going to go into a bit more depth about some of these options. All right, so the last thing that I'm going to talk about in settings is if we go to personalization, I'm going to talk about some of the options regarding the taskbar. So as you can see, the first option is lock the taskbar. That basically just locks the taskbar, you know, how I have it at the bottom, it just locks it in that position so you can't move it to the left, to the right, or up top, you know, that's what locking the taskbar does. Uh, the second option, automatically hide the taskbar in desktop mode. What that does is this, if I turn that on, it hides the taskbar. And then when I scroll my mouse down to the bottom of the screen where the taskbar is, that's when it shows the taskbar. So, you know, that's something you can have if you don't want the taskbar constantly showing, then you can do that and you just go down to it and it shows it. And then the same thing if you do automatically hide the taskbar in tablet mode, if you had a tablet that had Windows 10 on it, it's the same exact thing. You could also, uh, this button right here, use small taskbar buttons, it's exactly what it sounds like if I turn this on. It makes all my icons for my taskbar smaller and it makes the button smaller. So that's something you can do if you have a lot of icons, you know, and taskbar icons that, um, you know, make them smaller to save more space. You know, it's something you can do. I'll just change that back. Uh, this option you do not have to worry about, which is replace the command prompt with Windows PowerShell. That's for more advanced users. I would not touch that. So uh, this next option, show badges on taskbar buttons. So what that means is this. A badge is something like if you were to get a notification, say if I had in my email program that was as a taskbar icon, you know what a badge is and say I got two new email messages. You know, it, essentially what it would do when I have this show badges on, it would show like a two right on, typically to like the lower right 
of the actual email icon and it would you know signify that I have two new messages that's what a badge is on these taskbar items it allows you to show different updates you know for those uh, programs that you have as taskbar icons essentially so I would just keep that on and again you can change the location of the taskbar say I wanted it to the right switches everything to the right you know uh, but I'll just put that back at the bottom and combine taskbar buttons so this is what uh, you can do if you have a lot of taskbar icons or you have a ton of stuff open what this does is it will again combine the actual taskbar buttons and icons right here so that uh, you know when I hover over them see how I have word open and I scroll over it and I have two word documents open you know it combined them because you can see a little like extra line right here a little overlap because it combined the two icons whereas if you don't do this you know and I click never it has everything just open side by side so that's why I would just keep it uh, always hide labels you know if you do it just when the taskbar is full then again it will still show like the full programs but when it does get full that's when it starts overlapping so I would just keep it always hide the labels and then when you scroll over it you know it will show you the multiple instances of that program that you have open Uh, and the rest of these options I would not worry about. You don't have to do anything, but those are the basic, you know, options that you have when working with the taskbar and things you can change regarding it. So now that we talked about the taskbar, you know, now I'm going to show you guys just a recap of task manager, but again, go into a bit more depth about the new things that we actually learned. So again, if I right click any of the black area on the taskbar and click task manager, it opens task manager. And as you can see, with these uh, processes open it will show you what you have going on in your system so if I click fewer details it will show me the actual programs that I have open but then you always want to click more details and it shows you everything that you pretty much have open and it shows you how much CPU it's using memory disk etc and you can see how like this kind of turned orange for a bit because it's using a lot of data, you know, of the particular my network. So, you know, if you want more in-depth information about this, this is when you can go to performance and you can actually see a nice graph of your utilization of your various hardware components. So CPU, it's actually only at 7 to 8% of usage. And then my memory, though, actually is being taken up uh, about 5.8 gigabytes of my memory, 36% of it's being taken up. I have disk usage because I'm actually downloading something and then uh, my Wi-Fi connection, it's showing that's being used. And then this is my GPU. I have a graphics card in here, and it's showing the usage of that. So th these are really nice because, you know, you can go to this performance tab, and if you see that your computer system is really kind of getting slower and things like that, you can check to see, like, are my components fully being used? It is, and if they are, you know, especially like your memory, if this is full, and it's close to 99% or 100% usage, and you have like quite a few programs open, well then what you can do then is upgrade your RAM, which will allow you to have more things open at one time and still you know, have your system perform pretty fast. Now again, we already talked about you know startup. So in the app settings, I showed you guys that startup tab and it shows you what programs you know, start up uh, as your system, you, know, you first log into Windows. And this is the same thing, just shows you the same thing. It shows you, you know, what startup impact that these programs have, whether they're enabled or disabled or not. And this is just another area where you can come into to disable some startup programs that are really taking up a lot of system resources and seeing which ones have a high impact. And, you know, if your system's really starting out slow, then you could disable some, you know, to make your system perform better. But that's really it. You know, there's nothing too much more about task manager, you know, just you can check this processes tab, see what's, you know, really taking up a lot of usage of various components. You can go to the performance tab for a more, you know, graph based visual if you wanted that. And then you can go to the startup tab. So next, the last thing I want to go over is uh, Windows security for you guys and just demonstrate, you know, what it looks like, which it pretty much looks exactly the same because I took the screenshots for the presentation from my actual computer system. So, you know, it, I'm just going to do a really quick recap of Windows security next. So going into security, again, you could literally just go to the search bar and type in Windows security and it should pop up. Click Windows security. It takes you to the main screen 
which again, if it's got the check mark on them and it's green, they're all functioning and performing correctly. So you're good there as long as you know it has those, you're good. And again, if we go into virus and threat protection, then you can actually see the various options you have. You know, quick scan is the basic option, and that's when you know you have automatic scanning. It only does the quick scan. So if you want a more comprehensive scan, that's where again you can click this scan options right here, and you can do a full scan, custom scan, or Windows Defender offline scan, which I already talked about. You can also see the allowed threats. Uh, I wouldn't really touch that. You know, again, the only reason why you would have allowed threats is if you had like a legitimate program that was being flagged as a virus or malware, but it wasn't, and you needed that program to function properly for whatever you were doing, then that's where you could allow this threat. But other than that, uh, I wouldn't really do that. And again, the various scans, you can change them right here, but I would just keep it on quick scan. But again, if your system, if you do feel your system might be infected, that's where you could do a full scan and these other types of scans. But then if we were to go back, again, virus and threat protection settings, here's where you can manage those types of settings. And again, this is just really turning things on like real-time protection, cloud delivered protection, you know, just making sure I would keep all of these on because it makes sure that you have automatic updates and you automatically get patches and things like that. So I would just keep all this on. Wouldn't really mess with any of this. And again, here is where you can actually manually check for updates for virus and threat protection. I can click check for updates and click that button again and it will check for updates and it will let me know when it was last updated and again it will check for updates and let me know if there are any new updates. So that's something that again you don't necessarily have to do because Windows will do this automatically but you know it is something that you could do and check manually because you know I've done it plenty of times where I've checked it manually and there are updates that it may not have picked up yet so and then it gets them right away and the faster you get these security patches the better and as you can see you know it said last updated now on the current time that it was when I checked it so that's good and all fully and up to date and then if we were to go back to the main screen, again, I wouldn't really touch any of these, just leave them be, you know, as long as they're enabled, you're good. And again, with the browser control, if you are not using Microsoft Edge, a lot of the uh, settings in here don't really apply to, you know, if you're using Google Chrome or Mozilla Firefox. You know, it's not gonna warn you for these specific programs or websites that it thinks is suspicious. Only, it's only gonna do that if you're using Microsoft Edge, so be aware of that. But yeah, that is it with my uh, video two, part two demonstration for the various items I talked about in my Windows 10 Intermediate video. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something today. And I will be making more videos in the future. So stay tuned for that. And thank you all.